Target has a pretty incredible story, considering they are one of the most successful retailers of all time. I'm sure most of us have been there. The company claims that 75% of the country's population lives within 10 miles of a Target store, which makes sense considering that there are over 1,900 of them located across every state. Their combined revenue is quickly approaching the $100 billion mark, which not only makes them one of the top 10 retailers in the country, it consistently places them among the top 40 of all companies. They have a dedicated following and overall positive reputation and not to mention an adorable mascot so I think it'd be a great idea to take a look back at this company while trying to pinpoint the factors that have separated them from the others and help to make them successful. First off is the fact that Target was started as an extension of a much larger company. There's a lot to talk about with this one because even though Target itself started in 1962 the company that started it goes back 60 years before that. The founder of that company was named George Draper Dayton. He was involved in banking and real estate leading up to 1902 when he moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota because he saw it to be a fast-growing city with some potential business opportunities. He bought an empty lot of land, constructed a six-story building on it, and convinced a local department store named Goodfellow Dry Goods to partner up with him and move their operations into that building. Within the year, Dayton took full control of that store and renamed it after himself. In the following decades, that company grew into a major retailer, not only with the Dayton department stores, but with a number of other endeavors as well. In 1929, they bought a jewelry store that was followed by many others that by the 1960s were combined into their own division called Dayton Jewelers. In 1956, they opened a shopping mall near Minneapolis called Southdale that was wisely anchored by a brand new Dayton department store. Over the next couple of decades, they opened three additional malls in the area and combined them into their own division. In 1962, the big one, they opened a discount chain called Target in Roseville, Minnesota that was placed into its own set. And then, in 1966, they started a chain of bookstores called B. Dalton that was soon combined with some other bookstores and put into its own segment. So, as you can see, in the early days of Target, they were kind of getting lost in the shuffle. But I say that starting out as part of a larger, diverse company like that was a big positive because they always had the resources to invest in it. They weren't forced to go out and find outside investors that believed in the concept. They were able to rely on their own judgment when making those decisions. And since the customers responded well to that first store, their decision was to open three more of them by the end of the year. You can probably see where this is going. By 1975, the Target chain was generating more money than any of the others, so it motivated them to refocus their attention. They moved away from the specialty stores and more toward the general stores. Their plan involved divesting the jewelry and bookstores, opening more Target locations, and acquiring more upper-scale department stores. In 1969, they had already bought J.L. Hudson, a chain of department stores based in Detroit, Michigan. In 1978, not as upper scale, but they bought Mervyn's, a chain of department stores based in California. And in 1990, they bought Marshall Fields, a chain of department stores based in Chicago. But even after all of those changes, Target was still proving to be, by far, the most successful of any of them. So by the year 2000, they changed the name of the entire company to Target Corporation and soon started divesting everything that wasn't Target. Over those next five years, they converted all of the Dayton stores and Hudson stores into Marshall Fields and then sold Marshall Fields for $3.24 billion. And then soon after, they sold Mervyn's for $1.64 billion, totaling almost $5 billion that could now be put toward the Target stores. So there you go. That is a very brief overview of how Target was originated and propelled forward by a much larger company. For my next reason behind their success, I'm going to go ahead and call it Strong Morals. And look, I'm not saying that Target is the most right righteous company out there. They're not perfect, but I am able to point to a few things that reflect a general care toward others. George Dayton himself, the founder of the company, was known for being very religious. He was part of the Presbyterian Church, so he was sure to implement those ideals while running those original Dayton stores. You know, they were closed on Sunday, didn't sell liquor, he even refused to advertise in a newspaper that had ads for liquor. He was known for donating a good percentage of those early profits to charity, and in 1918 even dedicated one million dollars to 
establish the Dayton Foundation that still exists today as the Target Foundation. In 1946, the company started giving 5% of their pre-tax profits to local communities, a practice that I believe they've continued every year since. And that is a lot of money. Today it amounts to hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Also, I should mention along those lines, I guess, in 2020, they raised their minimum wage to $15 an hour. I say this all helps them because it makes them look good. It helps their public image and there is something to be said about honoring the founding principles, but on the other hand, you could argue that most of this has actually held them back. Giving away so much money. In fact, those religious ideals weren't abandoned until about 1950 when the third generation of Daytons took over. At that point, they became much more aggressive and actually started doing better because of it. So there's no doubt that the morals and charities have slowed them down in different ways, but for the purposes of this list, I'm gonna go ahead and choose to believe that the positives of it still outweigh the negatives. Next up, I wanna talk about how Target has been pretty forward thinking. We've already seen some examples of it, going back to when George Dayton decided to settle in Minneapolis because he saw a promising future for the city. I mean, for heaven's sake, that first Target store was created in response to the public's demand for a discount store. It was right at the same time as the first Kmart and Walmart, so they were benefiting by taking a risk to follow a new trend in retail. It was a similar thing in the 1990s when they started opening the bigger versions of their store called Target Greatland or Super Targets. Just always keeping up with the competition and in some cases even leading the competition. A few examples of that would be in 1944, when they were among the first stores to offer their employees a retirement plan. In 1988, they were the first retailer to implement the barcode scanning in all of their stores, giving them an advantage as far as inventory management and even customer wait times. I'm still going here. In 1995, they introduced the Target Guest Card, which made them the first of their kind to introduce a store credit card like that. In 1999, they introduced Target.com and have since been very adaptive to the new world world of e-commerce. They even started these smaller store formats optimized for online order pickups. Do you remember in the 1990s how all of their stores had that squiggly neon design? I used to think that was so cool, but I have to admit, it's kind of outdated. That's why they continually redesign things and try to keep it fresh. In fact, in 2017, they reinvested $7 billion into the company, and a lot of that went toward what they call reimagining their stores. There's like an 80% chance that the target near you has gone through some major remodeling since then. All right, next up on my list is the balance that they found between quality and price. Before the first one even opened, the president of the company described it as a quality store with quality merchandise at discount prices. So it was always meant to be a discount store, very much in line with Kmart or Walmart, but would you agree with me when I say that on the sliding scale of price and quality, when compared to the other two, they are a little bit more toward the end of quality. I don't think there's a great way to talk about this objectively, but from my own experience, Target is maybe a little pricier than Walmart, but it's just so much more pleasant. Not even talking about the merchandise, I'm just referring to basic things like the overall lighting and cleanliness and organization, but yeah, also the merchandise. I guess there's a term called cheap chic. I don't see myself using that much in the future, but it's kind of what Target is known for. It's like buying something for a little bit of money that looks better than you would expect at that price, if that makes sense. Or as they say in their slogan, expect more, pay less. There was this whole thing where people started pronouncing it Target like a French word, the joke being that the stuff that they sell seems fancier than you would expect. Even when the company is forced to pay more for something, like during inflation or the pandemic, they do their best to keep prices low so they have it cut into their income rather than passing it on to the customer. I think that shows that they found a sweet spot between price and quality that makes them different from their direct competitors while still attracting customers. The fifth and final thing that I think contributes to their success is their use of private or exclusive labor. This is a huge part of their strategy, considering that it now accounts for about a third of all of their sales. They are literally selling tens of billions of dollars worth of private label merchandise. And when I say that, I'm referring to these Target brands that you can't buy anywhere else. There are 48 of them in total, and some of them have gotten pretty popular. For food, they have Market Pantry or Archer Farms. For fashion, they have A New Day or Goodfellow and Company. I don't know, they're all over the place. Just search around the store and you will find all of these Target exclusive brands. You know, that's part of it too. Target sells almost everything, pretty evenly. They have a fairly equal distribution of sales categories. Many of their customers go there for that one-stop shop appeal. It helps them avoid going to a bunch of different stores, and all of those sections allow for dozens of private labels. In general, Target would much prefer their customers to buy these rather than the national brands. The reason being that they help build customer loyalty, you can't buy them anywhere else so you're forced to come back to Target, but also because they tend to have a much higher profit Profit margin. Those private labels generally have a much 
lower cost, so they tend to retain more money from those sales. So there's my list. I think that those are the biggest reasons behind their success, but obviously with such an extensive company like this, there is so much more that can be discussed. Their marketing has been strong, especially their logo. I can't even think of another one that's simpler and more representative than that iconic bullseye. For the first few years, they actually had this more complicated looking one with more circles, but they quickly simplified it to the one that we know today. It represents the name of the company, conveys their color scheme, and most importantly, it looks adorable on Bullseye the Dog. The store layouts have been effective, CVS bought all of their pharmacies back in 2015, they have these all plastic shopping carts, there's a lot to it, so I'm curious to hear what you perceive to be the biggest reasons behind their success. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about Target in general? Are you a frequent customer, or do you have reason to dislike them? How do they compare to Walmart or the other discount retailers? Are they better or worse? What has been your overall experience? Also, looking back at the list of the biggest US retailers, there are some other great stories there, many of which I have yet to really talk about, so let me know if you want me to focus in on another one of those in the future. And any other thoughts you have about Target, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.